Brief update on the high mountains, as there's been a few major developments since my last post. I just got down from the Drew Traverse myself. I'm posting a full video on that eventually, but if you're too impatient and can't wait, then you can check out my post on Instagram. But that's not the main news. Since my last video, it's stayed pretty damn hot. Still not officially a heatwave, but it's mid-August and this is the south of France, so it's been pretty sweltering. And also, we've had some pretty huge thunderstorms as well. Predominantly, it has been high pressure, so it's been dry at night, but anytime the pressure's dropped a little bit, yeah, we've had some torrential downpours and some massive thunderstorms. Just the other day, up there, lightning was flashing more than once a second for something like an hour. It was absolutely insane, so yeah. You need to be careful if you are planning on being up in the high mountains because the atmosphere is still very unstable. There's a large snowpack around still which generates a lot of energy in the atmosphere any time the pressure drops a little bit. So yeah, I'm very active on the storm front, that's for sure. Also, with the sustained heat, even when it is clear at night, the overnight refuse now is beginning to become pretty poor up in the high mountains. So I was descending off the Drew and you're up at 3,500 metres or so. Even in the early hours of the morning, the snow wasn't properly frozen yet, so you really need to be careful if you're doing a route that relies on well-frozen snow bridges and or properly frozen couloirs. But the big news, and this is why I'm bringing this video sat here now rather than waiting time next up in the mountains, is that there was a, a major serac fall on the Voie Mel of the Mont Blanc de Tacle, which is also the start of the Trois Monts route on the night between the 4th and 5th of August, so that's a few days ago now. And sadly there was at least one fatality, potentially more, and multiple injuries. Well, yeah, the initial strike which collapsed wasn't massive, big enough to do damage of course, but yeah, it wasn't huge. But it came from right at the top of the slope, and by the time it's been trained, loads of other debris as well. That debris fans ran all the way down to the Col de Midi, so that's the entire Wyanam Mal on Mont Blanc Tackle basically wiped out in one go. So, you really shouldn't be considering doing the 12 months route or even just Mont Blanc Tackle anytime soon, because Anytime there's a serac fall, this inevitably destabilizes other bits of ice around about as well. So yeah, it's I'd be steering, steering well clear of that slope for a long, long time now. But it's worth pointing out that this has nothing to do with climate change or the heat that we're experiencing right now. Serac collapses are not related to temperature at all. Well, they are to a little bit, but it's mainly to do with the movement of the glacier. In that regard, they're pretty random. So yeah, there's really not much you can do to avoid serac fall other than don't hang around. Don't be there when it falls, basically. With the heat that we're having now, the Gouta route is also very ill-advised. The Grand Couloir is very active now. Stone falls coming down there every few minutes throughout the day. So, basically, Mont Blanc is off the cards now for the foreseeable future. People will still be doing it, but yeah, it's really not advised. The Chamonix guides are also recommending against climbing the Cosmic Arete now as well. As, as I said in my last video, it was already incredibly dry then, it's only got even drier now. There's been a number of big rock falls in recent years after the first and second abseil, and it's only a matter of time before the whole gendarme falls down basically so you don't want to be anywhere near it when that does happen again people will still be doing it but they're stupid really save it for another day when it's cold and snowy because it's much much better as well as much safer but as i said at the start i just got down off the drew traverse and conditions now are pretty damn good about as good as they're ever going to get these days so if you are interested in doing it you have to take a high line up the glacier to approach the start of the route you can no longer cut straight across it's just yeah the glacier is far too chaotic but it's reasonably straightforward to head straight up the snow and onto the glacier from the um, rock band above the Chapeau hut and then you can traverse across basically most of the big crevasses. You only got to go in and out of one really big one, it's quite scary but so far the snow's holding up well. You need to be aware of course though that you are traversing on pretty steep icy slopes. At times it's more than 45-50 degrees and you are directly above massive crevasses so one slip, everyone on your rope's going in and you're probably both dead. So yeah. Need to be switched on, but te technically wise, it's a pretty straightforward approach. Once you're on the route itself, there's no snow anywhere that's going to cause any problem. There's no ice, there's no water running. The rock is all dry, and yes, of course, there's loose rock you need to be aware of. There was yet another big rock fall on the west face as we were on the route itself. You could hear it, and it's pretty scary, but the south face is much more stable generally. You need to be aware when you are crossing the approach couloirs that there's pretty much constant rock fall coming down them, so don't hang about. But other than that, most of the route itself is on okay rock. And yeah, like I say, conditions on the route are as good as they're going to get. So if you fancy going for it, then now's a great time. A bit further afield, I gather that the, the Lion Ridge, aka the Italian Ridge on the Matterhorn, was formally prohibited by the local authorities. That ban has now been lifted, but the Corral Hut, or the Lion hut will remain closed for the rest of the, the summer season now. It's still possible to do it without using the hut. When I climbed it last year, we stayed at the lower hut 
and just start an extra couple of hours earlier in the day and you can get up and down just as easily without the corral hut. Okay, you don't gain the benefits of a night altitude, but other than that, it's not drastically more difficult starting lower down, so you can do it, but yeah. Presumably conditions are very dry right now and the risk of rockfall is quite high, which is why the hut is staying closed. So that's it, just a quick roundup for this week, but remember, it's summer, it's hot, it's dry, the mountains are falling down, so if you are coming out now, stay safe, be aware, pick the routes responsibly and appropriately, and don't push your luck. If it's too hot and dry to do what you're hoping to do, do something else instead. Even go to the lake and go for a swim, make the most of the nice weather. It's not the time to be taking a chance in the high mountains now. Stay safe and have fun.